understand that what they're thinking is that they don't realize that, that when you're killing the earth, that we're actually killing all of our resources. Well, in fact, they're dying right now, and they're not even listening that it's happening. And we will have no place to live. What children? We're, we're setting up a scenario that none of their economies are going to be economies. It's going to be superfluous. Um, what The information that you presented, what is the timeline on that? Like, How long has it taken for things to get this bad or to this level? Is it the past five years, the past ten years, or is it the past two years? Well, I think that the programs have been going on for 15 to 20 years. I'm not sure what the timeline is, but I can see it accelerating, and that's what concerns me. When you go from a, a cloud condition overcast, and then when they don't spray, and it starts to clean up, you get a flux where you do get some vegetation growth. So everybody goes, oh, things are okay. And so it's a phasing. It comes in, it goes out, it comes in, it goes out. And over time, now, it's accumulating. And when we have a haze like we saw coming from San Francisco to New York, across the entire United States, then it looks like we're reaching some sort of saturation level. That concerns me a lot. Yeah, it's pretty intense. Uh, I also uh, went across the U.S. recently in, in the past week and saw the same thing, and I was just startled. I, I just didn't know what to think. I actually saw at the... 38,000 feet, some of the, uh, the the planes that do leave the persistent contrails on the edge of a storm, like guiding or doing something uh, around this storm, uh, and the outer edges of the storm had those typical wispy cirrus clouds as a result of the of the spraying, and it's like, here, here it is, on this level, you were actually able to see it. And then, you know, before that, the haze. You look down, you're looking through haze. And Rosalind, you, you were in the middle of a, of a contrail, you were saying. Yes, we flew through some. I was looking out the window because we were watching what was going on as we were traveling across the United States for five hours or so. Did you take photos? And and we yeah. took photos. Oh, yes, oh, we yeah. have photos. Great. We've got thousands of and photos. Oh, good. <laughs> but, but what happened was is that there was haze. When you looked at the ground years ago, you could clearly see the ground when we were flying over it, and I have crossed the United States before. And what happened is you would look down, you would see it clear and crystal and beautiful, and you could just, it was just breathtaking to be at that height. And now when you look down, it's all haze and man-made clouds, it, and it was just stunning. And then you would see the contrails. You'd start with the wisp, and they'd get larger, and we flew through them. There was uh, a couple of X's out there, and um, I've flown before. I've had jets going, or, you know, moving in front of airliners, leaving contrails and looping right in front of us. Oh, you've seen that. I've seen that. So yes. that means these commercial pilots are—they know what's going on. The commercial pilots—they they have to. They have to know what's going on. Whether they can talk about it, I don't know. But a lot of them have put pictures on the internet, and there's some fantastic pictures by pilots on the internet taking pictures of these contrails that look different. But you see, when you put new pilots in the seat who've never seen anything different, they don't know. It's the pilots that are 40 years old and 50 years old and 60 years old who know what's going on and have seen it. And so there's a difference in whether you've been flying recently, and this is the way it's always been, um, but I would say that uh, you asked how long, um, I think in 1988 or 89, the program started to come into full gear, and that's when people first started seeing and talking about persistent jet contrails. Before that, see, we know that they could fly without leaving persistent jet contrails and man-made clouds because that's how it used to be when jets first came online in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s, and so we know that there's a big difference. And so there's no reason that we have to be having jets that leave persistent jet contrails and man-made clouds. Well, Rosalind, you um, 